Can everybody see the slide? Welcome everyone. How's everybody doing today? <coughs> You'll have to bear with me here. I have a little bit of a allergies right now bother me. Uh, but we will make it through. Any questions, write it in the room. Today I'm going to talk about really what I do, which is a focus on a system that I personally created, gosh, a really long time ago now, I guess 13 years. I started trading in 2008 and I focus on gaps. So this is really a very high level system to trade. It's a system that I use every day. It doesn't matter if I do options. <coughs> it doesn't matter if I do day trades. I use my system for any trade that I take a position in, okay? And again, we're gonna talk about that more here today. If you have questions, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So once you start trading, for those of you here that are trading already, if you ever get what I call the market bug, it bites you and then you're pretty much hooked. We saw that in the last couple months ago with the Reddits that were trading that GME. People that never traded before were throwing money into that stock, winning, losing, winning, losing, back and forth. Some people made a lot of money, but most people lost. But people then were bitten by the market bug. Once you realize that you can make money very quickly and sometimes a lot, just by simply sitting at your computer trading, it, it's something that's exciting. It's motivating. <coughs> Excuse me, it makes you want to do it. it. Makes you want to learn more. And I find that people usually don't ever give up. Now, whether you make it past the point of actually becoming profitable consistently, or you just flounder around or losing, really is 100% up to you. Now you may say, well, that, that's not true, Melissa. I, I wanna do this, I've been trying and trying and trying. Yeah, but the reality is that nobody starts trading right away and becomes successful immediately. Everybody goes through the process. The amount of time it takes for one person varies from person to person. So you might be doing this for years, and then all of a sudden, boom, you come across someone that knows what they're talking about, like me, and then it all clicks, okay? It could take years, it may not take years. It really depends, okay? And any questions, write it in the room. So if the market bug has you, bottom line is you're hooked. You wanna make money trading, you wanna make money in the market, you're probably going to continue to trade at some level, whether you do it every day or once a month, uh, you're probably really gonna continue to think about it in the back of your mind, in the forefront of your mind, until you figure it out. Some people, it takes a lifetime to figure it out. Like I said, some people, it happens fairly quickly. It, 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 it changes from person to person, okay? You can make money trading in the US stock market though from anywhere in the world. The bottom line is, it really doesn't matter where you live. It depends your time zone. I trade the morning, I focus on the morning, I focus on into the open, we'll talk about that today. The setups that happen quickly right at 9.30, okay? But the reality is that you could be in a different time zone. For me, I like Eastern time zone because I'm a morning person, but you could be in Europe. I mean, I have some people trading with me that are in Hawaii. That's very, very early, okay? But the question is, how do you make money? How do you become successful? How can you do it? You have to have a strategy. You have to have a focus, and you have to have a system, okay? If you don't have a system, what are you doing? You're basically gambling. You're just like, oh, well, I heard good news on so-and-so stock, so I'm going to buy it. You have to know that you can have good news and a stock fall. You can have bad news and a stock rally. One has nothing to do with the other. Okay. Now, what I do is based on technical analysis. So I'm reading a chart. I teach that in the class more specifically in detail, but 
I don't look at fundamentals. If you want to study fundamentals, if that helps you, fine, fine. But the technicals have to be there. The price action, the movement has to be there to tell me if the stock's going to move higher or lower. That's what I make my decisions on. Okay. Craig said he started trading in 2008 as well. Yeah. Yes, I am recording the webinar, which will be on YouTube later tonight. Okay. But trading is fun once you feel confident in a system. Until you do, it's a crapshoot. It's like gambling. You're almost better off going to Atlantic City. Your odds are probably better. A long time ago, I think it was 20, yeah, it was 2017. It was the end of 2017. I was on Fox and Friends on Fox News, and they asked me what was a better uh, bet for people's money doing the Powerball or Bitcoin. I said there's higher odds of Bitcoin going up than winning the Powerball. I, I was right. At that time, Bitcoin was around 20,000. Then it dropped, and I think it's around 55,000 today. It was up over 60,000. Low odds with Powerball. But both of those things are extremely risky to do. What I do, I go through a whole method and an analysis of it, and I pinpoint and pick and try to qualify which stock I'm going to do in the day, preferably only one, okay, if I can help it. If you don't have a system, it's very stressful to trade the market, okay? I have this chart up here. I clip this. Actually, let me pull the market up right now because I didn't look and see where we closed. Hang on. I'm just going to take this off for one second. So this is the QQQs. So we closed today, bounced, gap down here, dropped, really didn't go anywhere at all, and we're right off the highs. There you have it. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what a gap is, since I have this up before I go back to the PowerPoint, a gap is just a difference between the close and the open. The market closed here at one price Friday at 342.01 and opened at another price of 340.39. So it gapped down. That's a gap down. Now, here's a gap up. Market closed at 319.13, open higher, 323.07, boom. Okay, that's gap up. A gap is any difference between the close and the open. You need to know that the market and also many stocks gap most days. That's just a fact. Okay, let me go back here. <laughs> now, what I was saying is it's stressful without a system. But if you have a system, then it helps you trade with more confidence and conviction, which helps you be more successful. When you're in a fear-based mode, you will be nervous, you will be back and forth, you will be shaky with your trains, you will not be confident, it will be difficult for you to decide what to do. And your chances of being successful or making money are lowered, okay? Lowered. So it's better if you have a system to follow. What is my system? It's called Golden Gaps, okay? So. You can unlock the keys to your personal profit potential in the market by following one specific strategy daily. For mine, it's gaps. And I termed my system golden gaps because it's like finding gold in the market. Because when you find one good one, that's all you need. Gap trading is where the real money moves and momentum in the market take hold. Trading gaps makes it possible to trade for a living. Why? Gaps have big moves with momentum. Okay. What do I consider a big move? Let me just go back to the chart here. Hold on. Let's look at IBM. IBM tonight is up. Okay. You see this happening live. Oops. Here, let me just move this. This is a live gap that's happening right now. IBM has earnings. The stock was up here previously. It looks like at 139.59. Does everybody see this? So this is a big move. 
I have no idea if I'm going to do this tomorrow. I don't know because as you can see, it's moving and wiggling and jiggling. 139 is big difference from 135. But this green bar is a move up. We missed it here. It was right after four. See it? So this is a live gap happening as we're talking right now. I don't trade it till the live day. We're in the after hours. Okay. But you can make a lot of money if you pick the right stock to trade in the right direction because gaps have big moves. So we'll see where this goes tomorrow. I don't know. It's still training. It's still basically gapping. Okay. Let me go back. <clears throat> so what are golden gaps? Here's another one, BA. We've done this a lot. We did this a lot in 2020 specifically. I only clipped this chart back here for two months, but we shorted this a million times. We did puts in Boeing. We shorted this just Friday. It had a nice drop off on Friday, okay? We did this as a day trade. You can also have done this Friday as a put, okay? So a gap has a big move in the direction you want to go, which you can see here, the stock has been trending for the last few weeks to the downside. So the big moves, the slidey board sell-off has been down. Here's the gap. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. You could have shorted this and you could have done a put and you could have made money. This is back here. This was, looks like March. So I get up in the morning and I look for as any number of gaps. Could be 10 things, could be 30, could be 50, depends how many things I see. And then I rate them using my system to determine which one I want to do in the live day. I'm only usually looking for one, okay? Any questions here so far? And you can write it in the room. <coughs> so, one of the things I think is important, and I drew this little pie chart, is the more time you spend analyzing, doing the pre-work, thinking about what you want to do, all of that, the analysis part of it, the you need to spend more time doing that than you are in the trade. So this blue represents all the pre-work I do getting up early in the morning, analyzing what stock I want to trade, rating it, going through it, looking at the targets, all of that. This is the time I'm in the trade and out. So you should spend more time in the analysis part and less time worrying about the trade itself. Most people do the opposite. Most people spend very little time in analysis before they take a trade and a lot of time worrying about what they're doing after they're in it. Should I get in? Should I get out? How much do I have? Should I get a ba -do, ba -do, ba do And they worry and they spend hours or minutes or days if they're in an option thinking about the trade. So pretend your brain takes up a certain amount of time on whatever, pretend it's Boeing. Your brain should take up all the time thinking about Boeing before 9.30 on Friday morning. And then very little time on the Friday trading it. And then you make the money and you're out. If you're doing the opposite, that's a mistake, okay? So the more time you put into the pre-work, the easier the trade's gonna be. The trade should be effortless. This does not mean that every trade that I take works. Some trades I take lose, but guess what? When they lose, they lose. It's still really no work for me because if I get stopped, it just stops. That's the odds of trading. It wasn't like I worked hard to stop it. Do you understand what I mean? I worked hard in the analysis. It either wins or loses. So when you're in it, the momentum should flow with it, like the Boeing. I'm just gonna go back here a second. And we took the trade and it just dropped. Boop. And we shorted it and it fell. So it was selling. What are you asking about the SMP? There's always volume in the market. What do you mean? There's always volume in the market. <clears throat> now, getting back to what I mean by high level, very precise, very specific, very detailed. Think of the pie chart. 
all the analysis. Most day traders are trading on the fly. They wait till 10 o'clock to decide what to do. I'm figuring out what I want to do an hour before the open, sometimes three hours before the open. When I roll out of bed, I see what I want to do, sometimes the night before. So it's all that pre-work that helps me really get it down and crunch the numbers so I know that I want to do this. That's what I'm talking about. When you are succeeding and you're really at the point where you are thriving, that's a good word, thriving, when you're in the trade, it shouldn't be stressful. Do you understand what I mean? So take it to the next level. Take it to the higher mountain. Don't do what most traders do, which is wait until the day to decide what to do and flounder around back and forth and over trade and trade till four o'clock, which I don't do. Now I might be in an option and I might exit the option later in the day, but my day trades, I'm in and out of the morning. I only ever do anything with volume, period because you can't get any movement in something without volume. And sometimes you don't get movement in something with volume. Since you brought up the GME, let's just look at that thing today because earlier it wasn't moving. Didn't move today, look at that, zippity poop. You couldn't have made any money doing this today. What would you have done with it? Look at the size of the bar. Now, as it turns out, this did have volume, which is unusual, but sometimes you have volume and still doesn't move, but you definitely don't have movement without the volume. Follow me? But from the high low of the bar in this today, it barely moved. Had one spike up, dropped, flat line, boom. What are you gonna do with it? Nothing. If you had gone long, you would have lost. If you had shorted, you would have had to short it on the rally up at the high. So that wouldn't have made any sense either. This is hardly moving in the last three days. Okay. And unusual because it does have volume. But most of the things we do have volume. Most stocks that have volume move. But I definitely am not doing anything without volume because low odds it will move. Follow me? <laughs> okay, getting back to the BA. This was a nice trade. We shorted it at 251, boom, 1,100 shares, risk was 25.30, that's an advance risk. Guess what? You could have taken half that. You could have taken 550 shares or 500 shares. You could have risked $1,200. You could have taken 200 shares if you wanted to. Either way, it was a very profitable trade. Why? Stock fell, stock sold off. Exit was 246.70. I was trying to wait for it to break 247, it did. It almost got to the dream target of 246. I think the low of the day was 246.20 something. Anyways, this was a good exit. After the sell-off, I'll pull up the one minute in a minute and show you. Profit was $4,730. So it was basically not only a full amount of profit of the 25.30 you would have risked, you almost made double. You almost made 200%. That is a very good trade. Why? Quality entry, momentum, the pick. Stock moved five bucks, almost. Here was the day. This was Friday. Friday was 416. There it was. I'm gonna try to squish this so you can see it. Anyways, we did this in here, snug as a bug. Great entry, never went negative. So if you shorted it, you just, you, actually what I did do was put the stop at break even because we were in it late. I said, I'm just gonna put this at break even. If I get stopped out, I don't lose. If it goes, it goes. Waited, waited, was up. Boom, ba doom, ba doom. Here's the sell off. Doink, and you're out. And there it is. There's all the profit. So these are nice red selling bars, two in a row. Beautiful move. So again, this is momentum. And obviously these bars do have volume. They do have volume, but this has volume every day anyways. See the volume here. This actually moved down today. That was Boeing. 
So that's what I do. This was a day trade. I called it in live in the room on Friday. If you'd like a trial of the day trading room, email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can come in for the rest of the week. I call the entry and the stop, and I call the exits. And I believe if the trade goes on for a while and I close the room, I tell you, these are the numbers we're looking for. Or you can get out wherever you want to get out. We were up in that in the morning. I just wanted to make more. Any questions here so far from anybody? <coughs> Everybody good? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, it's just about one focus. One high level, one system. That is all you need. One quality system and strategy is all you need to pay yourself on a regular basis. By regular basis, I mean a couple of days a week, a couple of trades a week. If you want to be more active, fine. I suggest you do day trades and options to be more active. But I'm not the type of person that day trades a million trades a day in a day trade. I just don't do that. If I make money on somebody in the morning, I'm done. I get out, I'm done. I may do a couple of options, but still, you have to limit how much you're doing because it is about the focus. It is about the quality. There might be thousands of stocks in the market in any given day that move. Not a lot of them are predictable. What I try to do in the pre-work, remember the pie chart, is analyze and predict that it's going to go in a certain direction and have a big move before the market opens. Okay, That's the whole process of it. I do this by looking at the daily chart. I do this by analyzing the gap. That's what you learn from me in the class, okay? Knowing one good strategy you can replicate over and over for profits can change your trading world because it will take you out of the mindset of thinking that this cannot be done to getting into the mindset that it can be done. And for a lot of people, it's extremely important. A lot of people have a negative attitude that they're going to lose in the market and that the market's rigged. That's not true. Again, going back to the GME about all that happened with that and the drama and the news, that's exactly what people believe with it. The system's rigged. You can't make money as one person. As one person, you cannot move a stock. When you accept that and understand that, you go with the institutional money that moves stocks and you're going to be fine. If you trade against it, you're going to lose. That's the way the cookie crumbles. You also cannot overtrade or take too much risk. If you have $5,000 in an account, you can't risk $5,000 in one trade. You're really limiting your odds then. That one trade could be the loser. Do you understand? Any questions? <coughs> Any questions for anybody? <laughs> so having one powerful strategy that pays will open up your eyes to the true profit potential of the market. The market can offer you a real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. Professional gaps are a high income pain strategy but it is about the level of quality and the focus. Let's talk a little bit about a professional gap. What does this term mean? A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. It is called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. No reddits, okay? These are not retail traders, they're hedge funds. It's big money, banks, big professional traders taking hundreds of thousands of millions of shares, like we're seeing in the IBM right now, okay? Again, I don't know where that lands tomorrow, but that stock's moving, okay, as we speak. In the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. I go long and I go short, but I do prefer to short, okay? So I name my gap rating system the golden gap because finding gaps that rate high per my system are, are it's like finding gold because that's how I'm going to make the money. That's how I'm going to win. Golden gaps are professional gaps. They are gaps that have a high odds of working of the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large momentum move. And by high odds, I mean an 80% win ratio. So you have to figure when you size yourself, like I said, some trades will win and some trades will lose. You can't be all in with your whole account and any one trade. Any questions here so far? <coughs> okay. Anyways, my system is about high probability. Working at a high level, working with high probability. Anything that could put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. And that's what you want. Because there's too many people that are, 
out there trading the market, trying to take your money. It's a very competitive environment, as you well know. Nobody's creating anything when you trade. You're losing money when you lose, someone else is making money. When you make money, someone else is losing. You're taking it away from them. Got it? The 26-point Golden Gap rating system gives you an edge. It reads the price of the gap and using technical analysis on an advanced level, pinpoints which stock to trade that day and in what direction. The high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. 26 points is an enormous amount of detail. It takes about 5 to 10 minutes if you know what to do to rate one gap if you're new. All right? It takes less time for me because I've been doing this for a while and I'm experienced. But that's the whole process. The more you do it, the better you get. It's like a sport. <laughs> the more you golf, if you're a golfer, the better you get. Okay? We were talking about this earlier. Who makes golden gaps? Large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation. That's what you want. And the conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency, which is important. Thus, an action is being forced by participants in the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money, which again goes back to what I was saying. That's what really moves stocks, okay? Any questions here so far? <clears throat> See a couple people coming in late. We're talking about gaps, okay? If you learn what to do, it takes the stress off you to take the risk. So I still use a stop, but I lower my stress by going through the analysis in the pre-market so that I feel high level of confidence that the trade will work. There's no guarantee it will work. Some trades will I take will lose, but I feel confident that most trades will work or more will work than don't. And that's what allows me to put the risk on, okay? Especially an advanced trader risk, <clears throat> okay? But you can trade my system with a beginner risk or an advanced trader risk, it's up to you. You can take one contract and an option. You could take 100 shares of that Boeing that we shorted Friday. So whatever works for you. But my whole philosophy is don't make it harder than it is. So many people, when they're engaged in the trade, it's like the biggest work that they have going on for them. It should be the opposite. I'm gonna go back to the pie chart here just to make my point. Here it is, okay. <coughs> this is the work. And while you're doing this work, no money is at risk. It's all your brain. This is when the money is at risk. Once you take the trade and the management of it, it should be a lot less work than the pre-work. Okay? And therefore less stressful because the bigger part of the time that you're taking in XYZ trade, whatever it is, Boeing, SPY, whatever, is you're not even in it. You don't have any money at risk. Because again, you're thinking about whether or not you wanna do it. No one's forcing you to do anything in any given day. Follow me? So don't make it harder than it is. Following a system makes it easy. If you don't get the setups, you don't do it. You spend the time analyzing it in the pre-market. That's what I do. So that I don't have to manage it hard once the trade is on. All I have to decide is where I'm going to get out when I'm up. I can't make any decisions when a trade loses. If I take it and it never goes right, what's there to decide? It just loses. Again, no thinking involved. It's not hard. Now, this is a spy trade we did. This was a call. We went long the market and this was an unusual trade because you could have held this to the very last day of expiration. On Tuesday the 13th, I called the spy calls, the 412 calls, 
Cost was two bucks, sold them at four was 100% turnaround. You could have actually held this trade into the very last day. Why? The market continued up. Oh, actually, I don't have, here, let me go to Friday. Let me just go to Friday here. This is unusual, but this depicts the strength right now in the market. Tuesday was here. I called the 412 calls and the market went up, made new highs, ran all the way up to 418, but this trade was still up even on the very last day, which was the 16th. So it was $6 almost through the strike in the last day. That's unusual. I think a good exit is before the last day, but the reality is you could have held it the very last day. That's how strong this market is right now. Again, no management needed. You take it, it either works or it doesn't work. In this case, it just went, boom, okay? That was an option. That was a bullish gap in the spot. Here, I have the chart here. So the day I called it was here. Closed here, gapped up, boom. This was on Tuesday a week ago. It was a bullish gap. So we did calls in the SPY. Again, it was a nice gap. Market was getting bought and it had volume. Here was another option we did last week too. Again, if you use my system for day trading or options, I like to do both. I divvy it up. More expensive stocks, I tend to do options. It's just easier to trade them. This expired on Friday. I called it Wednesday. It went beautifully. Cost was 360, 20 contracts. Risk was 7,200, sold at 950. You could have taken one contract and spent $360. You could have taken two and spent $720 and you would have made over a thousand bucks. This was a very nice trade. It was the 335s. Here's the chart. This is Goldman Sachs. Closed here, gapped up, boom, took off like a rocket. Went to the dream target, took off, which was 340. And actually, I didn't even call this. Well, I called it at 9.38. It was early, but I didn't call this one even before the open, actually, which sometimes I do. It was early, though. See that? That was buying. That came into Goldman Sachs. This is the daily chart. See the gap? It's a bullish gap, okay? <laughs> Any questions here on this? So again, this trade was big. The kind of thing I like to see, the kind of thing I want to see, it's earnings season now. It just started last Wednesday. This was the first day that was a good sign. To make that kind of money in one day is fabulous. It's great money. And again, it didn't matter the size you took. It ran right up. Oh, I apologize. My phone is ringing. H hang on one second. Anyways, in options, you can hold them overnight if they're not going yet. But in the case of Goldman, this went so big, so fast, it would be crazy not to get out. I will point out again, though, that this held over 335 boom, into the end of the week, too. I didn't look at the price of this Friday, but it was well over 335. But this was a good trade Wednesday. Any questions here so far? This is from Jackie. Jackie is with me for a couple of years. She takes options and day trades. She does small size because she feels comfortable with it. So no one says that you have to take a big size. You do what works for you. Some people have big accounts and take small size. It just makes with them whatever they feel comfortable doing and relaxed. Because again, you have to keep the stress level down, okay? And I think it's important for people to see results. If you're trading and losing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it is very difficult for you to feel positive about what you're doing. You will tend to get down, you will complain, you will be mad at the market. It, you know, even if you take a good trade, you'll probably screw it up or screw up the exit. You have to have a positive attitude about what you're doing. It's extremely important. But again, going back to what I was saying, you can use my system for day trades and options trades.
Any questions here so far? Okay. If you think of anything, you can write it. The most important thing for you to do though when you're trading is to make money. I think sometimes people get so used to losing that when they're up in a trade, they mismanage it because they've lost so much money in bad trades or trades that just lost, whatever, that they mismanage the winners because then their expectation is that this one winner has to make up for you know 10 trades that they just took that lost. That's not how the market sees it. The market doesn't see it that it owes you anything. Every trade is its own being, okay? You must look at every one, particularly just like I'm analyzing the gap in the morning. Every gap is its own gap. Every gap is different. Every trade is different. Do you follow me? Every chart is different. That's true too. But you can make money very fast in gaps, and it's one of the reasons that I like to do it, okay? As, as far as how much you want to make, it has nothing to do with anything other than what? Your skill set, number one. And number two, how much money you're risking. People always complain and say you can't make money if you have a small account. That's not true. You can turn a small account into a medium account and you can turn a medium account into a large account if you're taking quality trades. Versus if you have 100 grand, you can lose it and you can go from 100 to 50 to 50 to 25 and no shot. And I've, I've seen people do that because I've heard people sob stories when they call me and they're looking for a place to learn how to trade when there were someone that's a prospective client. So you can have a lot of money and still lose. It does have to do with knowing what to do. It does have to do with a high level of system. It does have to do with the knowledge and you making good choices. Going back to the pie chart, that's why taking the time and the energy and the work that you're doing in the pre-market really makes a big difference. Taking quality trades, okay? But I find that being successful is very empowering. While it's frustrating to me sometimes when I take a trade that loses or when I look at the market and it doesn't do what I anticipate, that's part of trading. That's part of the environment. That's part of it. And I look at what I do and I try to learn from something if I didn't see something correctly or I lost in a trade. That's how you gain experience over time. And that's how you get better. And I, and I, and I do that myself. Okay. It's a process. <clears throat> for the people who are new, I say don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself time to learn it. Really grasp the concepts and understand it and take small size at the beginning. That could be for a week. That could be for a month. It doesn't have to be forever. Okay. Any questions here so far? So my system is a 26 point rating system. This is the meat and potatoes of what you learn in the class with me. You rate the gap. I do it in the morning, the pre-work. That's how I decide what trade I want to take. That's how I do it. Okay. Any questions? So I'm looking for what? To find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Two, big moves in the day. Three, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. Four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. That is what I'm looking for all the time, okay? I've got to find it. If I find it, I'll just take it. I might take a trade in 9.31. I might take a trade in 9.35. I might wait till 10 o'clock. Either way, it's early. It's in the morning. Okay, same thing with options. But really the philosophy behind everything I do is what? I'm analyzing the daily chart. It's a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And I'm looking to do that, okay? Every single time, that's the pre-work. And then I'm looking to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame on the one minute chart, which is a high degree of focus and accuracy. That counts too. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the right direction. And using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy, which again goes back to the higher level. 
you have to have more winners than losers. You have to have more winners than losers or you won't be profitable. While it's great to have some huge massive trades that go 200, 300, 400% return on investment, that is a one-off. That's not gonna be every winner that you have, okay? Look at it like you're chunking it out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You chunk it, okay? If you hold some into a larger target, it's gotta be for a reason, okay? It's running, it's early, you've got the market with it, whatever the case may be. The gap rated good, all right? And we do that with some trades, obviously. But I'm really looking for 50% return investment or 100% return on investment with options. And in day trades, I'm looking for usually one to one, but it could be more than that, like Boeing. Could be almost two. That was not a, a trade that was hard to manage. You were in the trade, you were up, you put the stock at break even. By the time that stock collapsed, it fell three dollars in two minutes. So that, what do you? You're up. You're up a lot. Boom. Falls, drops, get out. Doom. That's it. Okay. But I'm all about using the strategy. I'm all about using the system. That's how I'm pinpointing the opportunity to see that if something's going to have a big move, to see that the momentum's going to come in. If you want to make a set amount of money, your average risk should be that amount. If it's 500, it should be 500 a trade. If it's 1,000, it should be 1,000 a trade. That's how I would look at it for the day trades. For your options, if you're risking 1,000, your goal is 500 to 1,000. If you're risking 500, your goal is 250 to 500. This is not set in stone, okay? You may take an option, you may risk 500, it may be three o'clock, Day before expiration, you're up $240. Are you not going to get out of it? No, that's silly. You're up almost 50%. The option expires tomorrow. You're green. Get out. This is a lot to do with common sense. Okay. <coughs> Any questions here? Again, I apologize for sniffling and coughing here. Any questions from anyone so far? Listen, once you know how to make money, it does become easier over time. You make your own choices in life. And I will say with 2020 and the onset of COVID and people are still in this, it's been a blessing to be able to work from home. Many people are, are, are working from home now. They can trade and work from home. So you can still have your full-time job and trade on the side if you're working from home. It's not like before where you're in the office and you maybe couldn't make it work. So, you know, if this is something that you think you wanna do, it's a good time, especially if you got the time to learn and do it. If you're at a certain age in your life where you're not doing as well as you feel you should be doing financially, what can you do? What can you do if you're feeling frustrated? A lot of people are feeling like this. A lot of people are feeling like this, again, as a result of the after effects of COVID, where people's businesses have been affected. And they're, they're, some people are being forced into early retirement, or some people are being forced to change jobs or change industries or whatever the case may be. It's, it, it's something where you have to try to take the cards you are dealt with and make them and turn them around into a positive direction for you. If you go down that road of negativity, it can be really, really frustrating. I just, I got back today, I was in a cab. You know what, I'm gonna Google this guy. I got in the car, it was, a, it was an Indian guy and he was so cute. He actually told me he was called Happy Cab NYC. Let me see if I can Google this guy. He was going on and on and on about all these meditations and stuff. And I was laughing, laughing, laughing. The Happy Cabby! This is hilarious. Oh my Lanta. This is a guy I was just in a cab with. He was going, he just, first of all, I got in the cab and he offered me, yeah, he offered me the, he offered me the, antibacterial soap. I said, no, I have gloves. And he went on and 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 on. He did this whole thing. How funny is this? 
I don't know who this woman is, but he said he's been driving a cab for 17 years. So that's funny. I'll have to read more about that later. Anyways, the point is your attitude has a lot to do with everything you do. If you don't enjoy your job or you don't like what you're doing, it's a problem. If you don't enjoy trading, then chances are you're probably losing. Now, if you're trading and you love to trade, but you're losing and you're frustrated, well, then obviously you have to fix something that you're doing. Don't make a whole big mishmash out of it. Take a step back or ask me questions and say, I know that I am doing something wrong, but I can't figure it out. Can you help me, Melissa? Because very often, sometimes it's just as simple as one thing. Or as a person in the trading room, and well, there's two people in the trading room the last week. One of them wasn't using stops. Well, that's a problem because you essentially have unlimited risk. And the other person was taking a trade like an option in Amazon that might cost $5,000 and they're risking $1,000 in all the other trades. Well, guess what? We did Amazon last week and it lost and the other trades worked. So guess what? The person was upside down with with all the other trades that she took that were positive and one loser she she didn't do well because she oversized herself way too much in one trade so sometimes you don't even know what you're doing just tell me and i'll figure it out okay i'm very uh, introspective in my own self of the things that i try to figure out that i'm doing or to improve my own trading in myself if you're not that type of person you need to reach out and that's the importance of having a mentor but, you know, having a positive attitude really, 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 really does help. Having a negative attitude will only hurt you. You're working against yourself when you have a negative attitude and you don't want to work against yourself because guess what? Everybody else in the market is working against you because they all want your money. They all want your money. Nobody's a friend in the market. Everybody wants your money. They want to take it. That's what it is. That's what I find so interesting about the whole scenario with Reddit. People act like they were surprised about that. Of course the hedge fund wanted to take those people's money. No kidding. That's what trading is all about, okay? The smartest win, and you have to think about that and be thoughtful in your trading decisions. This goes back to the pie chart where you're really thinking it through before you take a trade, okay? Think of it like if you are managing hundreds and thousands of millions of shares. You think you'd take a trade on the fly into the open in a stock or the market? No. You would have maybe spent hours or days or weeks analyzing what was going on in a certain stock in the market before you take a position that's huge like that. Even if it's not your money, even if it's somebody else's. You take it seriously. So I take what I do seriously, but I'm nimble, so I'm usually doing something different every day. Okay? Any questions here so far? But it's about job security in today's economy. Today's world is not the same as 25 years ago or 10 years ago or even five years ago. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. Look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. Do you want to create your own future or do you want someone else to determine it? We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on. If a company has poor management, they might fail and it has nothing to do with you. Or your industry might fail and it has nothing to do with you. I mean, I, years ago, I did mortgages, and the industry just completely went kerplop. So glad I got out of it when I did. Probably is impossible now to, to get a loan approved. I was faced with a decision to deal with a difficult industry or find another job, and I, and I chose the latter. <coughs> so it, I don't know what everybody here does, but it's a good time to think about it. If you're a skilled person with a great mind, you can do this. You can work for yourself. It takes time to learn it. It doesn't have to take forever, but you do have to take it seriously. It's worth the time. It's worth the effort. You get better over time as you do the right thing, but you have to have a good system or you're never going to make it and you're never going to be successful and you can't trade on the fly. Okay. You can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. And I teach my system in a class, which I usually do once a month. Okay. Any questions here so far? The more often you make money on a consistent basis, the more confidence you will build in yourself and the more conviction you will have in your own ability to trade well. One of the most valuable things that you learn during the Golden Gap course is to have conviction in the Golden Gap strategy. This conviction will help you produce positive results, which is what you want. 
Staying positive might be a challenge for some traders, but is a requirement for success. This is a requirement for success for anyone who wants to earn money from the market in any amount. Whether you want to make a dollar or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. You still have to know what to do, okay? And like I said earlier, you need the right attitude. You need the right attitude. So why not get the right attitude, get the right system, knowing that if you do that, eventually you can risk more. You can make it big, but you're not going to get, you can't put the cart before the horse kind of thing, all right? It has to be step by step. So my system is called the Golden Gap System. It teaches a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That's what I do. It's the meat and potatoes I got to throw in and I rate the gap every day, whatever ones I'm doing. Like I'll do it in IBM tomorrow morning. Like I said, I'm going to wait because I don't really know where that's going to land by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Could be good, could be bad. Actually, let's look at it now quick. <coughs> oh, this looks the same. This looks the exact same. Okay, so I look for the gap. I rate the gap. I rate longs and shorts. I'm trying to find the best stock to trade each day. I might do an option and a day trade. I might do one. I might do both. But the class teaches you how to play the stock on the day, teaches you targets, how to enter, how to exit, the points to analyze it. It's chart analysis and technical analysis on a very, very advanced level. The Golden Gap course is a complete system that you can learn how to trade. I teach everything in the class and I don't hold anything back. You must do the class to join the live trading room. But like I said, if you want a trial for this week, email me and I will send you a trial. If you're new and you're on a trial, I would follow along. And if you want to trade, I would just do small size or follow. Okay. But you learn in the class how to do it. The options newsletter I have where I showed you the trades, there is no prerequisites. You do have to know how to place the options trade on your own. Okay. Now, this was a long, this was an equity day trade. You could have done this also as an option. I did show you the spy call that we did, but we also went long the market. Entry was 412. This was a big size, but it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade that ran up. Again, the market has been making new highs constantly. I've lost track of how many new highs the market has. I've lost track of how many bullish gaps the market has had. This gapped up here, ran up, gapped up here, gapped up here, gapped up here. I mean, there's 20,000 gap ups in the market. Some of them have worked, some of them have not worked. We've been lucky to pick and choose the ones to do the right ones to make money. But when you've got momentum in something, again, whether it's buying momentum or selling momentum, if you learn how to play it, it's so easy to make money because you can be in and out and very, very nimble. And whether you take 100 shares or 400 shares or 4,000, it's the idea of getting in and out, in and out, in and out, okay? And when, when I do something that you think is expensive, you can do it as an option. So this was a long, but again, we could have done a call, but we did cause it to. Oh, here, here's the chart. But this was only through Thursday. This was Apple too. This as well was a long, okay? This was a nice rally up. This is not quite as expensive as a spy. Entry was 133.20. We're 2,500. Exit was 134.50. Again, dollar plus out. Boom. Profit, 3,250. Here's Apple. Again, in fact, I'll look up and see where this closed today. This ran up here, ran up here. Some nice moves in this stock. Um, and really, this is looking to break out again as well. Let me just see where Apple closed today. Yep. Strong as a brick. Now this gap down today, we did not do this here, but this looks fabulous to continue. All other things aside, I don't know where the market goes tomorrow, but, and then we have some data out later in the week, but look how strong this chart is now. And it was lagging for months, weeks. So Apple looks good. Let's see where that goes. 
This was a day trade though. This was a day trade. We also did calls in this though too. I don't think I have this in here. I don't think I have the option in here. But we did 135 calls. Shelly, I see you here. Are you in the Apple calls? Shelly, are you there? <laughs> so it's about empowering yourself to trade and and be in that in that independent mindset, okay? Create your own world the way that you desire, the way that you want to manifest and see it. Okay, Shelly said yes, she's in the Apple calls. Good. If you decide that you want to learn how to trade, it is, is an experience. I mean, you'll go through ups, you'll go through downs. Sometimes the days will be easy, sometimes the days will be hard, but you have to keep a positive and optimistic attitude either way. Getting back to the happy cabbie guy was funny. Um, I don't remember what I said or he said or something because New York City right now is a total disaster. It's such a mess. It's just a disaster, to be honest with you. And he had such an optimistic attitude and I said something about when do you think the city's going to come back? And, and he's like, oh, it's coming back, it's coming back. I mean, he was going on and on and on and on about it, you know. He had a positive attitude that the city was going to come back soon. I mean, what are you supposed to do? If your job is out, you're trying to get rides and customers and nobody's here, what, what are you going to do? Not work, go on unemployment? I mean, to be honest with you, that's what most cat New York City yellow cab drivers have done in New York. It's very difficult to get a cab if you're a person trying to get a ride right now. Only 10% of the cabs are running because the rest of them are in unemployment. There's not enough people here that don't want to work. They're making more than unemployment. So luckily, luckily, I'm lucky as a, as a person, as a, as a person in New York that needs to get around sometimes, this guy is willing to work. Because I don't know, he may be making more if he got on unemployment. But, you know, working, trading, being entrepreneurial, it's so rewarding. So rewarding. Okay, getting checks from the government is fun when you get them. They gave out the stimulus checks to people who met certain requirements. But, you know, there's no sense of progressing and evolving with that. And you're never going to get rich from government stimulus checks either. Okay. While people think about it and dream about getting rich with trades in the market, that does happen sometimes by dumb luck. It happened by some people with GME by dumb luck. There was no strategy involved with that whatsoever at all. But the fact is that that's rare. Most times, the people that create wealth with the market have a system, have a strategy, have thoughtful processes doing it, really know what they're doing it. They've been doing it for a long time. They're good at it. They have a skill, a skill set, you understand? And it grows on top of itself and, and, and manifests itself and gets bigger like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? Anyways, whatever the reasons are you want to trade, you can do it for yourself, you can do it for your family. You've got to make the time to start doing this. My class, again, is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. One strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad base view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail constantly. Again, you don't have to spend hours reading, reading earnings reports or watching the news or any of that. It's not going to help you choose what stocks to do with any level of accuracy. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps and you don't need to do anything else because if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will make money if you understand how to predict when the institutional money will come in and buy and move a stock up or short it or sell it and move it down. Again, it is about momentum, okay? So my class is called The Golden Gap. It's April 24th and 25th, nine to five. Cost of the class is $69.99. Email me if you're interested in signing up. I've been doing a special through Friday. If you sign up by Friday, you receive the trading room and options newsletter free to July 4th. So you get all my options trades and all my day trades until July 4th. So it's April, May, June, which is basically all of the rest of this earning season into July 4th for the same price of the class, which is $69.99. If you're interested in signing up for the class, you must email me to sign up. It is earning season. We started Wednesday. The big ones this week are Netflix that comes out Tuesday, no, Wednesday night. No, Tuesday night. What's today, Monday? Yeah, Tuesday night, which is tomorrow, tomorrow night. And we'll see what we get with that.
Any questions? Thank you for letting me talk a little bit later, Kathy. Let me just see if the market's moving here at all. I don't think it was. <clears throat> no, not really. I don't know why we dropped off a little bit today. It didn't matter. We gapped down, we slid a little bit, and then we held in support. So really a nothing gap here today. I did not short this. I didn't go long this. There was nothing here to do with this today. Don't forget the market's super duper strong. Not that I'm ever going to short it again, but I did not short this gap down in the market today. Any questions from anyone? New people, old people? Okay. Listen, email me if you have questions. Email me if you want a trial. Thank you, Kathy. Very good. Have a good night, everyone. You're welcome.